right. <laughs> so now the Germans have taken over. So <laughs> the Germans is, have taken over, I guess. This um, is Timon. Yes, and, do you want to hey. briefly introduce yourself, and then we can talk about the packages. Uh, yeah, I'm just a bit more of that, I guess. Near, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Timon. I'm also from Germany, and I uh, were mainly working on the desktop app for like three months now, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm a NixOS user, and uh, also been building the NixOS package uh, package on the side, and yeah. You can maybe tell us a bit about your background and how you got introduced to the project or joined the project. Uh, yeah, I was using um, Graphite for about one and a half years, uh, mm -hmm. very heavily for like all my art stuff I do on the site. Mm -hmm. And um, I was annoyed that there is only a web app. And then I joined the Discord and uh, asked, asked around um, how the state on the desktop app. And then we joined a call sometime and uh, I found out that the desktop app is kind of not ready at all. Yeah, and so that we th there would need... were, yeah, there were some very challenging architecture things. So what we want is that we basically do, basically run most of the code natively. Mm -hmm. And that means that we then have a, like we render the node graph mm -hmm. and we need to composite the render output together with our UI because the UI is still in web browser and, or well, rendered as web UI. And there were no tools or frameworks available to stitch those together. Mm -hmm. We did at some point have a demo where we could pop out the viewport into a separate window mm -hmm. and then we have the main window and the separate window with the viewport. But that's obviously not ideal. So when he joined and um, was asking about the desktop app, that's also why we weren't prioritizing it and working on it, because there were just technical hurdles. Mm -hmm. But around the time, like or shortly after, um, we did some new experimentation using CF, so the Chromium Embedded Framework, which gives us a bit more low-level control. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what we're doing is that we render the browser UI to a texture and then do our own manual compositing in a graphics pipeline. And like yeah. it's a uh, VGSL shader that overlays three textures and uh, displays the final result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the uh, like the artwork and viewport, like the whole viewport, is one texture, then overlays, and then uh the ui mm -hmm. and um that means we have the uh viewport with full native performance and only the ui goes through the cf uh, uh like latency stuff and mm -hmm. um yeah and also one of the like one of the technical challenges we overcame is that we render the texture off screen, like mm -hmm. the UI texture off screen, and keep it as a GPU texture. So on Wayland, we use DMA buff protocol to get the texture, like it stays on the remains of the GPU. We can copy it over, insert it into our program, do the compositing, mm -hmm. and that allows us to get, get pretty great performance in the desktop app. We're still working on improving that, but yeah. We're making and great progress. Actually, so actually, the code that was written to uh, do this, uh, keeping the uh, text like the UI texture on uh, the GPU, that will probably be upstreamed into the CFRS crate uh, very, very soon okay. because they basically were able to use our uh, abstraction and uh, build it into the yeah. API and. Like that's also like uh, OBS does a, use a similar approach. So OBS also uses CF. It does, yes. And uh, for some of their web view, like web content rendering, they yeah, also the use web docs. A, a yeah, they don't work on yeah. Wayland right now. And on exactly, and they work on Windows. They don't work on Wayland. I um, looked at the code, and well, there's no no real technical reason why it doesn't work on Wayland. The work just hasn't been done yet. Right. So we. I basically did the work and it works, so that's good. So potentially, that's also something that OBS could do. In the okay. Future. 
Um, but yeah, um, doing the, in the, a desktop app, even though we do as minimal native desktop interaction as possible for the UI currently, mm -hmm. it's still just a bunch of work. Right, right. Because there's so many, there's a huge difference between getting like 80% working and getting the rest. Oh, uh, camera uh, just turned off. Yes, I. Oh. <laughs> is, is the camera overheating? Possibly. Oh. Um, <laughs> it did, should be plugged in. Did I forget to plug in the. The power cord, maybe? Huh? <laughs> Professionals at work. I love it. In the meantime, we can um, momentarily yeah. uh, switch the camera to. That so looks uh, amazing. So... Can you fix it? We'll switch to the um, webcam for now. By the way, um, up there, you ah. can see our main CI server running. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great setup. Mm. Um, but yeah, so going all the way with windowing and it's, it's really difficult. And you can tell us a bit more about what it took to get it working with client side and server side decorations and the windows it's um... mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so i think i start with the wayland uh, site uh, basically wayland doesn't allow you to um like uh, hit test where the uh, mouse uh, is uh, mm -hmm. when it's outside of your window so outside the pixels you draw yourself Mm -hmm. um, so we basically need, if you want to have resized borders that are outside of your uh, actual UI, mm -hmm. you need to draw a bigger window and then uh, hit test on invisible pixels that are not shown in the compositor. Um, that's mainly for uh, like KDE, uh, GNOME and not really a thing for uh, tiling window managers. Yeah, but yeah like on the desktop environments. And um, that was basically a use case where we have like the use case of having a custom title bar, um, but still using a resize border and shadow that is supplied through a um, upstream, like a library that W in it, the crate we use for window creation mm. uh, is using, that's using, uh, like a similar, visually similar style to Advator. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually needed to upstream a, um, a feature flag to support the use case of still using these client-side decorations for shadow and um, resize borders mm. and uh, for the click testing to work, um, but disable the custom um, or the Advator style uh, title bar mm -hmm. and use our own. And um, that was not that painful on um, on Wayland and uh, X11, mm -hmm. but it's extremely painful for Windows because uh, on Windows, there's the same thing. You can't hit test outside of the window. Mm -hmm. um, so you would need to draw your own shadows and do hit testing on that area. Um, but getting shadows to display the exact same way that uh, Windows is normally uh, doing that, so it looks kind of like a native uh, window on mm -hmm. Windows, um, is very difficult. So we opted to um, use the, uh, like, still use shadows and uh, use a kind of hack to uh, draw over the parts that uh, Windows supplies, mm -hmm. but that disables the resize borders. Shadows still work, but the resize borders doesn't work. So I actually need to, um, like we open a second window, an invisible window over our own main window uh, that is slightly bigger just for hit testing and uh, thinking that every um, like every time we resize or move the window, we uh -huh. uh, move that uh, like invisible window with it. And um, then we um, have resizing and shadows uh, that way. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, then we also have weird edge cases where when you maximize a window on Windows, mm -hmm. Windows actually cuts off part of the of your window mm. depending on what exact window version you are on. So they cut off on the top 20 pixels on Windows 10, uh, 30 pixels on Windows 11, right. and you basically need to offset the uh, like the frame where you draw your own pixels uh -huh. so that the part they cut off is just invisible and um, it's very weird um, but all Windows uh, like Microsoft apps do it the same way so it's kind of okay. a uh, hack that got into like made into a feature right, and right. even uh, today it's um, done that way in the uh, official docs so maybe they support it now um, yeah, actually, when you try uh, any um, Electron app on um, on Windows, mm. uh, even VS Code, like a Microsoft product, uh, they do resizing wrong, and the resize border is inside of the UI and not outside. So we are actually doing um, better resizing than a Microsoft product uh, uh, like VS Code. Right. Yeah, it was so annoying. So annoying. Yeah. So, <laughs> the main and thing. I'm gonna uh, don't. I'm gonna start uh, working on the macOS version very soon. <laughs> that was not really tested until now, just because we didn't have access to a um, uh, Mac device. Mm. And um, I expect that to be um, and very annoying as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the main thing I wanted to ask you about, um, obviously, like Windows and macOS, they have their format so it's a pretty set format i don't know if you guys eventually want to be on the microsoft store or whatever but when it comes to linux what is the intention of actually getting the application available is it going to be getting it into distro package repos i know you've talked about doing a nix os package there's talk of doing aur packages as well is it just the intention to do distro packages or is there interest in doing like app images or flat packs? How I want to, I want to basically, I want to have an um, package on FlatHub mm -hmm. and uh, an app image that people can download from GitHub releases, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully also a uh, just a tar file with um, like all dependencies included. Mm -hmm. Like CF is our main dependency. Um, for other distro packages, probably uh, not done by us, at sure, least sure. Uh, until like people get on board that want to maintain those things, because packaging is uh, a lot of work. Right, right. Um, actually, probably people are watching that would that might be interested in doing that uh, someday. Um, so probably um, support um, a lot of ways of installing graphite in the future, but um, that will there we go. need to, yeah, nice. Uh, we will definitely need more people on board that can do packaging for that to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I will work on uh, the Nix package because I use NixOS and uh, we'll probably have a a UR package uh, at a similar point in time, right? Uh, yeah, probably. I think AUR packages should be relatively easy and we don't need to go through as many processes um, to get that approved. Another thing we are looking into is potentially distributing for through, for example, Steam okay. to get versioning or like on Windows, potentially the Microsoft App Store because we do need to or want to include some form of auto updating and ideally we don't want to build that ourselves sure. if we can avoid it. 